we have been discussing quadratic forms, um, equations that have this general expression. Well, incidentally, the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Now, for our quadratic expression, we have an x squared term, a y squared term, an x term, a y term, and a cross product, xy term, equal to some constant. What we um, demonstrated in the past two videos is that this part of the equation right here can be expressed like this, where the matrix, its diagonal elements, those are the coefficients of x squared and y squared. The off diagonal elements are equal, and whatever coefficient of x, y is, they're one half of that coefficient. So this is this, and then this can just be expressed, have the coefficients form a row vector times the column vector x, y, that's dx plus ey equals f. So this is another way of writing this. Now, in the last video, we handled a pretty simple problem, actually. We had an equation of this form, but there was no x, y term. And in that case, we could simplify the equation by completing the square. And what we discovered is that it led to a translation uh, of the origin of the uh, x, y coordinate system. Now here, we have really a simple equation, but now we have an x, y term in it. There's no d and e are 0 here, but now we have an x, y term to contend with. First thing, let's write this then in matrix form. So the coefficient of x squared is 3, the coefficient of y squared is 3, the coefficient of x, y is 2, take half of that, and those are the off diagonal elements. So this is written in matrix form, or as a general expression, if we call this matrix A, then here's a column vector here. Its transpose is a row vector here. So we've been writing this in general form like this. Uh, for our quadratic expressions, our relevant matrix, whether it's a 2 by 2 or a 3 by 3 or some square n by n matrix, it will always be symmetrical. Now, remember what we had discussed starting in video, I think it was number 33. In videos 33, 34, and 35, we discussed the principal axis of transformation. And that's what we're going to use in this problem here is that knowledge base. Remember, we had just a simple situation where we had an xy axis and an x prime, y prime axis that is also orthogonal to each other. So that our prime system is just our unprime system rotated by some angle theta. And then what we showed quite um, straightforward is that any xy point in this plane is equal to this matrix times its corresponding x prime, y prime point. And this matrix, it's orthogonal. That means that its inverse is just its transpose. And we call it the rotation matrix because it just, at least in two dimensions, it just simply rotates our unprimed axis system. We call this matrix C. So we'd have x, y equals C, x prime, y prime, or just vector x with these two components equals the matrix C times vector x prime with its two components. Now, we stated that, yes, this is a symmetric matrix. If you take its transpose, you get the same thing. It is symmetrical. Then, as we discussed in those earlier videos concerning the principal axis of transformation, if you have a symmetrical matrix, and now we're just going to talk about a 2 by 2 symmetrical matrix, because we're just simply we're operating in the xy plane. 
but if you have any kind of symmetrical matrix, its eigenvectors are orthogonal. So we have a two by two symmetrical matrix, like we have right here. Its two orthogonal eigenvectors might be like this, x1 and x2. They then can be our x prime, y prime axis. Now, it might not look like this. Eigenvector x1 might be down like this, and eigenvector x2 would be rotated like this. The important thing is that they are orthogonal. And then, as we showed in those previous videos, we were concerned not just with the orthogonal eigenvectors, but with their unit eigenvectors. And then, here's unit vector eigenvector x1, it'll have a component x1 and y1. Then what we showed is that x1, that's the same thing as the cosine of theta, y1 is the sine of theta, and then I think it was in video number 35, we also showed that if this angle is theta, so is this one, so that x2 and y2, they are minus the sine of theta, and the cosine of theta, respectively. What this means is this. We know in general that if we have some matrix, say H, say it's an n by n matrix, and this n by n matrix has an n number of eigenvectors, and we use those eigenvectors that their components to form another matrix. We'll call it L. Actually, we won't. We'll call it M because when you use those eigenvectors to form a matrix, so this would be comprised of all the eigenvectors of, ma of matrix H, X1 through Xn. then we call that matrix the model matrix. And what we showed back in video number 17, if we multiply on the left by the inverse of that model matrix times our original matrix A times the model matrix, that gave us a diagonal matrix. Everything was zero except the diagonal elements, and those were comprised of all of the eigenvalues of matrix H. And again, that was back, I think, in video number 17, when we started talking about diagonalization of matrices. Well, here, for our symmetric matrix, our 2 by 2 symmetric matrix, it has two eigenvectors, x1 and x2. They're orthogonal, and actually we're concerned with the unit eigenvectors. Here are their components. So you can use that to form the modality matrix, so that our matrix A times the modality matrix M and its inverse equals diagonal matrix. Everything is zero except the diagonal elements, which are the eigenvalues of our matrix A. What's unique here is that for a symmetric matrix that has orthogonal eigenvectors, when we consider its unit eigenvectors, the modality matrix that is made up out of the components of its, in this case the unit eigenvectors, well x1, y1, that's cosine theta, sine theta. x2, y2, that's minus sine theta, cosine theta. Well that's the same thing as our rotation matrix. So when we have a symmetric matrix, with orthogonal eigenvectors, and actually now we're using the unit eigenvectors, its modality matrix is the same thing as the rotation matrix. So let's see what consequences that has. So for our quadratic expressions, we have this general form, this general equation here, in component form, it would be written like this. And then what we had 
right here, we could have, say, well, that'd be the same thing as the modality matrix because we're dealing now here with a symmetrical matrix. The off diagonal elements are equal. So that means that we could say, well, x equals the rotation matrix times x prime or just the modality matrix times x prime. They're the same in this instance when we're dealing with symmetrical matrices. So we can write this equation. Now, what is this vector x prime? Well, it's going to have components, of course, x1 and y1, but that's going to be, as we'll see, the eigenvectors of our symmetric matrix. We'll come to that in more detail in a few moments. Okay, now we have this equation. Let's take the transpose of both sides. So we have, well, we started off with x equals the rotation matrix times x prime. For symmetric matrices, this is the same thing as its modality matrix constructed with the eigenvectors or the unit eigenvectors. Now let's take the transpose of both sides. So we'll have x transpose will equal the transpose on this side of the equation. And remember how we do that. We have to reverse the order of multiplication when we take a transpose of a product. So this will be transpose times m transpose. But now remember our modality matrix m, which is the same thing as the rotation matrix, it's comprised out of the components of these unit eigenvectors that are orthogonal to each other. So of course this column, this column vector has unit magnitude, so does this one. They're orthogonal to each other, so these are orthonormal. So, of course, m is also, and we just had it written in this form without the sines and cosines, it is um, an orthogonal matrix. So, m transpose, that's the same thing as m inverse. So, we could write this as times m inverse. So this is what, here we have column vector x, its transpose, which is a row vector, is equal to this expression. And that is what we have right here. Now remember, our general expression was this. Well, here we have a vector x, here's its transpose, but its transpose can be written like this. So we have that right here. There's x, tra there's x transpose times a, and vector x can be written like this. And there's vector x. Now, since this is the modality matrix, and again, we can write it like this because for a symmetric matrix, its modality matrix and the rotation matrix are one and the same. This diagonalizes matrix A, so we get a diagonal matrix, which is just simply off the diagonal elements are zero. It's two by two, so its diagonal elements are the two eigenvalues of this matrix. So. What we have then is that this equals this, which is what we have written right here, but then realizing this is a diagonal matrix, so we have that written like this, or writing the diagonal matrix out explicitly, we have this expression. So here we have 
We started off with this. Now we have a much simpler expression. The off diagonal elements, those are zero. We only have diagonal elements. But remember now, it was the off diagonal elements that are associated with the xy term. Now, there are no off diagonal elements, so there will be no, in the prime system, there will be no xy terms. Those have been eliminated. So that's the general strategy. Now what exactly does this mean? The best way to illustrate it is to work a specific example, and that's what we will do for this equation right here involving this matrix. And I'm running a little bit long on this video. Let's split this into two parts. We've shown now how we can write this expression like this. And of course, this involves some rotation of our x, y axis into an x prime y prime axis. In this case, for a symmetric matrix, that x prime y prime axis is just going to be the eigenvectors, the orthogonal eigenvectors of our symmetrical matrix A, which in this case is this one. And again, come back in the second half of the video then, and we'll show you exactly how this works out with a specific example using specific numbers and diagrams along the way. So if it doesn't completely make sense to you now, come back, join us for the second part of the video, and let's finish off the rest of the problem.